Fire Radio. Hey everybody, it's Rob. Frontline Mindset with National Fire Radio. I'm very excited tonight to be here. A good friend of mine who I've met a long time ago. Uh, kind of an interesting, uh, you know, tidbit here is how we, we, we ran into each other. But eventually uh, I had to help a buddy of mine out and um, bring his truck back from his ex-wife in Oklahoma. And it was a crazy story. But I ended up stopping in Terre Haute and uh, getting the chance to actually take a break off the road with uh, one of my good friends here. So, Lieutenant Chris Over Overpack, thank you for, for coming on tonight and being a part of the Frontline Mindset. I appreciate it. Hey, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you, and it's uh, always good to hear from you. And I appreciate the opportunity to, to be able to talk and, and, and have a conversation with you because, like I said, I'm nobody important in the fire service, man. Just a guy out here trying to make it. Chris, uh, so for those who don't know you, can you just give us a little bit of a, a background on, on who you are? Uh, my name's Chris Overpeck, as we all know. Uh, I got 30 years in the fire service. Um, through that time, I've both been in the career aspect and the volunteer side as well. Um, had some really amazing opportunities throughout my career, and that's kind of taken to me where I'm at today as a, a suppression lieutenant with the city of the, uh, Terre Haute, Indiana. Where did you? Where did you? Where, where did your journey start? Um, well, actually, the United States Navy, um, you know, we have like a small DC school because on ship, there's not a whole lot of places to run to if something goes bad. Yeah. Um, took an injury in the Navy, got out and was a uh, paid call firefighter in Riverside County, California. Uh, came home due to a death in the family, got back involved with the fire service. I knew that's really what I wanted to do. Um, didn't take it as serious in my younger years. Um, had some really good opportunities, um, took a job with the city of Gary, Indiana in the early 2000s, uh, came out of the out of the academy and I went to the rescue squad. <laughs> so I had a, uh, to grow up pretty quick, but I had some phenomenal mentors uh, out of that firehouse on all three shifts that really took a lot of time uh, and, and, and effort. They saw something in me. I don't think at that time in my life I saw a lot in myself yet. Uh, but they saw something, and they decided to give me a shot and, and pour their experiences and their knowledge into me. Um, was there for roughly six years, and uh, they were looking at layoffs at the time, and it was a real bad time um, in that city. And, and uh, I was uh, just gotten married. And I had a family, you know, I had to start thinking less about myself, more kind of about the family dynamics. What could I do? Um, applied for a couple different departments at that time, uh, actually transferred to Elkhart, Indiana. Um, as I shared in that story uh, with Jeremy on National Fire, um, you know, I, I had had some, some legal battles, made some bad parenting decisions, and... Uh, Really felt at that time I like I left that fire department down. Um, had a lot of backing and made it through everything. And uh, my wife's from Southern Indiana, so we, you know, kind of always made a promise to her that if we had the opportunity to move south, I would. Um, and still kind of stayed selfish. I wanted to go to a blue collar fire department. I wanted to see who was fighting fires, and it wasn't the fact of uh, the size of the city. It was, it was, I wanted to see, you know, who was, who was still knuckle dragging in the streets, who was still pulling hose, who was still going to fires with some regularity. And I'm not going to say we're, you know, in the top 10% of the country in fire loads, but we get a, a re respectable amount of fires in our city. And, uh, through this progress, um, I've had highs, I've had lows and uh, it's kind of taken me where I'm at today. I, you know, I, I think about it sometimes too, Christian, and the blue collar aspect of it, Terry Ehlers, who's a, uh, retired chief from the city of Newburgh, he said, uh, you know, you can be a fireman or you can make money, but you can't do both. And <laughs> I think there's an aspect of that where, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of places out there that you can go and, and be a clubhouse firefighter. Um, and I mean that no, like the fire protection has to happen, but like, there's something to be said about being in a blue collar environment. And, you know, I, I know that that day that I stopped by when I was passing through, like you can pick it up just the first, the moment that you walk through the door and that's huge i mean yes. it really uh, can you just speak on that a little bit because i think that you know when people are trying to make this decision no matter where they're at and they're, they're starting their career or at their midpoint and they, they want to change there's really something there to that you know 
I think I think the dynamics of the fire service have changed a lot, um, and I don't mean that in a, in, a, in a negative way. But I, you know, early on in my career, I was chasing fires. <laughs> I wanted to go to yeah. work. You know, I, I wanted I wanted to be the first due, if not first due, I wanted the worst assignment on the on the on the fire ground. I, I wanted to be involved in that aspect, and that's and that's how I focused. You know, where I was at, I I never chased money on this. Uh, I had known some firefighters, you know, growing up as a kid. I had grown up with some firefighters, you know, kids throughout my 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 life in school. But they weren't rich. They weren't bad off, but they weren't rich. And 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 when I really started realizing this, it, to me, it wasn't. And it still to this day isn't really based on the money. Um, I, I like I hate like a lot of guys. I like to go to fires. Um, yeah. And it's not just that. I mean, I like to help the public. You know, I mean, we all we all give that generic answer when people say, "Why'd you become a fireman?" Oh, I want to help people. Well, I think there's a lot of truth to that. You know, I mean, we we think of it as a as a as a uh, cliche statement, but I think that there's a lot that goes into it. You know, we 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 do serve people, and um, you know, I've I've seen a change in the fire service. It seems like some of the younger generations are more in the now. They they want to see you know where where can I make my living uh, financially coming out of the gate. Um, you know, we, we've ran into that um, in the state. We've had a lot of uh, departments offering lateral transfers and good for them, bad for, you know, the department that's losing people. Um, you know, but I don't think it's based about just the money. I think you've got to have the drive. You know, you know, there's so many things that we, we talk about and there's so many people out there talking about the same topics. But I think when it really boils down to it, you have to look in the mirror and ask yourself, you know, why, why do I want to do this? You know, what do I hope to gain? I know I'm never going to be rich. You know, I'm, I'm glad I've made it 30 years in this. I, and to this day, do I make a decent living? Yeah. You know, I've, I, I, I'm very fortunate with that, but I'm not rich by any means. Um, I still work jobs on the side. I sell fire equipment on the side. I still teach on the side. Um, because to me, it's more about the the service to the, to the community, the service to each other and the fire service, uh, you know, putting investments in our younger members. Um, I've only got, you know, in the realm of things, I got a, a handful of years left and, uh, I've had to change my thought process, you know, as I've grown up in the fire service to where I'm at now, I've really had to review who I was, where I was at and where's the fire service going and how can I impact it for, for the better. Yeah, that's, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack there. I, it's this, I wrote down service to each other because I think that's one of the, one of the things that I've always appreciated about my career is that, you know, working with people who are in a kind of a, I don't want to call it a scrappy environment and make it seem like I'm, you know, in downtown Baghdad or something like that with, a, with, with work, but like, it's just having that connection to build people up or to not. Like just to, you know, Anthony Bourdain said something about Detroit when he did his uh, Parts Unknown, mm -hmm. you know, and that they're like, you know, he equaled them. I'm going to butcher the quote horribly, but, uh, you know, they're like the Marines that they've that he's met, you know, um, grossly outnumbered and under, you know, under equipped. But sure. to take the job with a, you know, a sense of pride and almost a swagger to it. And, and that's really that's I think that you see that in these blue collar departments. And that's yes. you know, it's great to to hit on it. And I think the other thing too, is that you, you notice you, you have a handful of years left and I really like, this is the, I don't want to say the end, but like, it's the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning. I don't know, but like you, yeah. you're getting a choice to figure out how to leave that career and how you want, like it, you're in the driver's seat of that a hundred percent. I'm, I'm, I'm playing the back nine, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's the best way to yeah. think about it. I'm, I mean, I'm playing the back nine of my career and you know, Early on, the fortunate aspect, like we talked about earlier, you know, of guys pouring knowledge into me. And I mean, looking back on it, I knew it was important. But now where I'm at in my career, I didn't realize how important until the past few years. I mean, I think a lot about those past conversations. I think about the simple aspects of a senior member inside of a working vacant house fire. Hey kid, turn that fuck, you know, turn that nozzle, on, you know, quit fighting, quit fighting. And, 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 and we're, and they're teaching They're you know, they're, they're, they're taking the time. I mean, it's a vacant, it's been cleared, you know, we had, you know, mm -hmm. no victims inside, but at that time, the amount of knowledge that 
I received. You know, early on, it was just awesome. I thought it was cool. I have a company officer with, you know, 25, 30 years on the job telling me to t- turn the hose line off in a working fight. And they're taking time to teach me. Watch how it moves. Look how this works. Watch this. I mean, at that time, it was, to me, it was just an ego-ridden thing. You know, wow, this is awesome. This is awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm tearing this up. You know, this this is better than a con Xbox. Um but, you know, I, I, I didn't, at that time, I didn't think about the importance of it. You know, and I'm seeing it now within myself because, you know, as I've transversed through different departments, um, I kind of had the ego of, you know, I was fortunate enough to have this. Why don't you know it? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and I, and I'm sure at times I rub people wrong in my career and, and I've been able to, over the past handful of years now that I've been realizing this, I've been able to go back and, and, and apologize to some of these people. You know, hey, man, sorry for you putting up with me. I didn't realize this, you know, because we're really good um, in the fire world of um, counting on the, the downfall of somebody making a mistake, you know. And, and at times, I think now with some of the, the mindsets that are out there, We've got to start focusing on, well, why, why didn't the person know, or why did this mistake happen? You know, uh, did nobody ever take the time to show them? Uh, my ego overrode me for, for a long time because I just expected everybody to know what I knew. Um, I didn't think I was better than anybody, but I was that guy, you know, when, when somebody would make that mistake for a long time, you know, this guy's an idiot. He's stupid. You know, he's uneducated. But then I had to stop and think, you know, I mean, somebody had, had grabbed a hold of me one time and said, hey, man, they don't know what they don't know. <laughs> right. You know, and I just sat there and I thought, ooh, you know, this is and this was about the time where, you know, life for me started to change. I really needed to start to look at, you know, put the ego in check. Not everybody has been as fortunate as you. I mean, that that's all my, my career has been, has been just opportunities and phenomenal, phenomenal people that, and, and the bad thing is majority of them are gone. You know, they've, they've had uh, job related, you know, illnesses that took their life. And I wish I could go back in time and thank them because yeah. what they did and what they taught me, I mean, they taught me humility, you know, and I, and, and I always revert back to Gary. Gary was a very um, rough town. Um, we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, I can remember one day the, the muffler falling apart on, on the rescue itself. And we're on a route to a job and we pull over on the side of the road and we grab uh, hazmat banding claps to start putting the muffler system back together. So we can, so we can make sure we made the fire, you know, I mean, it was, yeah. it was those kind of things and the creativity, but we had each other's backs. You know, we didn't, we didn't have a lot of money in the city, but we made it work. Um, you know, and, and, and I can't thank those guys enough. I mean, I, I can't, I, I, I owe them so much to who I've become good times and bad. And like I said, you know, my ego was horrible for a long time, man. Now I'm, I'm trying to transition out of that. And I'm looking at, at the younger members of our department. Um, you know, the company officer aspect is, I, I believe has changed. Um, there's times now, you know, with these younger guys, you're not just a company officer making decisions on a, on a fire ground or a, a car accident or a medical run. I mean, you become a marriage counselor, you become a financial advisor. There's a lot of things that I've had asked of me that, wow, I, I wasn't prepared for that. You know, it's not in the Brannigan book and it's not in the Norman book. You know, how do, how do I fill this? Yeah. I, I, I always think that's a, uh, you know, in today's day and age, that is not like we, we've got to probably develop that class because, you know, and, and it's probably I know it's like I read some of the some of the books from back in the day. So I know that it's always been happening, but it just mm-hmm. feels like it's so much different than it used to be. Sure. Um, when did you when did you get promoted uh, from engineer to uh, lieutenant on, on the suppression unit? I am uh, getting ready to complete my third year uh... May 18th of this year. Okay. Uh, which was the bittersweet, you know, the, the bittersweet of, of getting promoted. Uh, downfall of that was leaving the the busiest engine company for fire load in our city. Um, <laughs> but the humorous side of that is I got promoted on Steve's birthday. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that was always a good one. He'll, he'll, he'll always <laughs> talk about that, I think, till, till the day one of us go. 
There's an awesome birthday present to give Captain Alex. Yeah, so, you, know. you know, and, it, and it was funny because the, the the first year um, of my probation, I took a picture because um, I, I asked Steve to help me, you know, to pin my uh, my trumpets on me. My wife had done my badges for a couple of departments, and I thought, you know, this is a guy that really helped me. We spent a lot of time studying. He just bombarded me. I mean, it was relentless on certain days, and it it was good information, and it and it helped me, uh, especially with my oral boards. You know, he really his constant bombardment. You know, and and he would challenge me. Why don't you know that? What about this? And so I owed him. Um, but that first year, I, I took a picture, and or my wife took a picture of him putting my bugle on me, and I so I blew it up and on there, and I put, if you look really closely, you can see when Steve lost his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so I framed it, and that was his birthday present after my first year. You know, just <laughs> the fun, the fun firehouse humor. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, and it's it, it's it's uh it it is interesting in that dynamic because having like I I remember when I stopped by there was a a fairly new individual I believe, mm -hmm. and yes. um I think Steve told them Captain Steve told them um you have you know two ears and one mouth so listen up and and i told you know your 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 net uh your net worth is almost it only as good as your net, your net worth work. and there's and, so much truth to that and and we got to talking about just the job and like you know it was uh it like the, the kid was engaged and it was awesome to see mm -hmm. um and i also was able to scam two meals out of the company so i appreciate that <laughs> I think I'd been on the road for a little over forty-eight hours from. I was going to say you, you had some miles underneath you. You needed something yeah. to eat. That was that was good. And the uh, yeah, because it was an ice storm. I was I was getting chased by ice storms the whole time. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, it's and watching. You know, it, it it's good to hear this because watching Steve teach uh, down at Revolutionary Fire Tactics the Lake mm -hmm. was the first time I think I got to see him teach and. And him, he had a piece of paper and a, and a pencil or a pen, and he was having people draw out the room oh, that yeah. they had just searched. But like, you know, knowing how he how he was operating, I cannot imagine the boot camp of of officer preparation that he was running you through. Oh, it was um, fun. Yeah, it was. Fun. I mean, it was. Looking back on it, you know, there were times I wanted to kill him, but. Um... No, I mean, it was, it, it, it really prepared me for a lot. You know, it, it's just, um, it, it's, it's one of those fortunate, uh, parts of my career. I can, I can stack on again, you know, I mean, yeah. I had such good leadership and such good mentoring throughout my career. I don't know how I got so fortunate. I really don't, you know, a small, you know, a small town kid from, you know, a D, a D student, I should say, you know, joins the Navy and gets injured, gets in the fire service, comes back to Indiana. And, and, and how do I get fortunate like this? I mean, I thank God every day for it because, you know, not a lot of people get these opportunities. You know, there's some times where people don't uh, get to have those shining examples or that shining leadership of, of people wanting to put time into, you know, and, um, you know, I've had some friends and colleagues, you know, they call me the Dr. Phil now because I'm looking at things a little more analytical, you know, when they call up with a problem, I'm like, well, you know, is the kid going through a problem at home? Are we doing this? Or, yeah. you know, have you guys talked to him about that? You know, and, and, and it's fun, you know, it's, it's the Josh and of, of the fire service, but yeah, I mean, I, I've had to look at things differently. Um, we need, we need to, you know, we had this conversation. It was really interesting. Um, you know, when we were down in Texas, uh, teaching with the Louisville Fire Conference back in, uh, I think it was November. And uh, we had some really great instructors sitting around the table one night, and it got brought up, um, you know, w what are we doing to to promote positiveness in, into the younger people? You know, because before, you know, when, when a company officer spoke, you know, 20 years ago, you know, 25 years ago, you know, you, you shut up, you listened. And the transition now is, is technology is caught up with us, you know, because you see kids grabbing their phone now. And the first thing we take into consideration is they're screwing off. You know, we don't stop and think, man, are they looking something up? Because um, I got caught my pants down one day on that one, you know, guy was, was, pulled his phone up and he's, and he's looking at his phone. I'm like, Hey man, this is something serious. Well, the bad thing was, is a book that I had referenced in, in the conversation of a kitchen table. That's what he was looking up. Yeah. yeah. So, 
I thought, man, because it's my first my first inclination, and, and a lot of these guys, a lot of the older guys think that, you know, as soon as they grab a phone, they're screwing off. They're looking at chicks, they're on TikTok, they're on Facebook, and we've got to find a ground where we can connect um, because the technology is far surpassed some of our senior members. You know, some guys don't understand uh spreadsheets and excel i mean they just they understand the basic emails and they and some struggle through that you know so i'm sorry good no even even the like the just understanding the aspect of how information is so readily available and then how you handle yourself and i watched a dynamic the other day where you know there was a it was an argument of details but the phone came out to prove that you know that they essentially they were bickering back and forth about whether natural gas and methane were the same thing. <laughs> and the phone came out and finally I was like, fine, you got, you got me. You, you know, I'll change it. Like, but it was, it's that, that might, that mindset of like that information is there, but it's <laughs> also what I, what I think is interesting too, is when that happens, people need to take note of it because uh, if I respect somebody, I'll never show them up. Right. But if they push me to a limit, that's when, that's when that's going to happen. And it just, you're right. Like we have to, we can't assume. Right. You know, and, and the funny thing was, is early in my career, we talked about that, you know, you, you, you could challenge an officer if it was done correctly. Does that make sense? You know, mm -hmm. you better make sure your ducks run row and you, and you didn't do it in a disrespectful way, but if there was something that needed to be shared or knowledge that you had, I mean, it was, it was open. And, and at times, you know, you caught, you caught a little bit of slack over it, but it was well worth it because it helped you grow as an individual, you know, and as a company officer, I think now thinking back to some of those incidents that I had early on, you know, I've been able to make those, those standpoint decisions based on that. You know, I have to be stern, but I have to be professional. I have to be respectful to the individual that's working with me. Yeah. You know, one of the first captains I had, Mike Brower said, if you protect the men, they'll protect you. Yes, and that'll they he's like and always just re keep that in the back of your back of your mind. So he was mm -hmm. uh, he was right. So we we hit on something before you know, and, and this, this this the theme of the conversation kind of is helping out that uh, the the younger generation or just the fire service in general as you are on this back nine. But there's a there's a class that I think kind of ties into some of the stuff that we were talking about here that you've been doing and i just want like i want to start diving into that because when you first bought it up i was like holy you know i just trying to watch my language and my uh old yeah. age here but you know it was it was pretty freaking impressive so it um it was a challenge like we had spoke about uh previously um i'm an instructor with O'Burn fire uh training and uh, we're based out of kansas city missouri um and i work with just phenomenal instructors to that company and just have had continually, you know, awesome opportunities. But we received a phone call one day from uh, a couple of our owners had talked and they said, Hey, we want you guys, myself and Steve, we want you guys to teach a leadership class. Um, but you can't use leadership in the title and you're going to teach it at the university of Missouri's um, winter fire school. And we're like, okay, we're up for a challenge. And then they said, Oh, and Hey, we need the, we need the uh, description for your class in about four hours. <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah. so it's over the uh, barrel here yeah so you know it, it was awesome i mean it's it's fun i love i love the challenge of, of working under pressure you know and, and i just happened to be at, at station three that day um with with steve and, and we talked about it a little bit and in conversations that we'd had prior to that you know with not just steve and i but within other instructors you know what are we basing, you know, who we are in the fire service and, and, and what we're trying to bring to the table um, as, you know, probationary firefighters, as a firefighter, driver, uh, lieutenant, captain, and, and, and on onward. And we, we came in, in those conversations, we always came back to, you have to have values. You have to have some sort of core value within yourself. Um, so we, we decided to not, because these classes, the sessions were each four hours we had to fill. And um, we didn't, I hate power, death by PowerPoint. I hate, you know, being lectured to. I mean, now with mm -hmm. with information, you're great. Um, but I remember back in, in earlier in my career, Tommy Brennan and um, Al Brunicini used to do uh, a, a couch 
conversation at FDIC, and it was kind of an open format. You know, you were able to go in and and have some conversations, and they would take they would fill questions. And I always thought that was really interesting because sometimes uh, within the crowd, you were thinking the same thing that somebody had the guts to stand up and ask. So it was kind of neat. So I, I had talked to the guys about that. I said, hey, what if we approach this as kind of like a an extension of the kitchen table kind of class? You know, um, we talked about it, we kicked it around, and we thought, okay, well, what can we come up with as instructors together uh, for three core values? And we came up with uh, dedication, commitment, and loyalty. Um, and then we, you know, we, you know, firemen are twisted, so we wanted to add a little bit of humor to it. So we opened up the class session with Mel Brooks' story of the world, or history of the world. And it's got the, the whole thing of <laughs> Moses going up on a mountain, talking to Jesus. And then we laugh because it was so fitting because, you know, he comes down to present the 15 commandments. He drops the one tablet. No, oh, wow, now I have 10, you know. <laughs> so we kind of always thought, you know, that's that's fitting because we'll drop a tablet and we'll have three. We'll, we'll call it good. Um, so we, we put it together and uh, we presented it. <laughs> And it was it was actually really amazing. I mean, it went it went better than we anticipated. I I had never done an open topic lecture class, never. And it was my first time of rolling because everything else I've always taught has always been formatted, whether it's forcible entry or you yeah. know pulling lines or pumping a rig. It's always there's always meat and potatoes behind it. Um, so we opened up the class, and one of the things we did, is, and I like to get to know people, so they gave us a class roster ahead of time. So I went through each of the sessions class roster, and I Googled each one of the members' departments and found out information about their department. Because if you're willing to take time out of your day to come to a class from some guy in Podunk, Indiana, then I at least need to give you the respect as a student to – to look at you and say, okay, where are they coming from? What are they about as a department? You know, I mean, you didn't know me. I mean, not many yeah. people know where Terre Haute, Indiana is at, <laughs> you know? And, and so I did. So I spent, I spent the, the night before going through uh, social media and I was looking at the departments and I documented out of each one. And as I went around the, the, the class, um, when they told me, you know, this is my name, this is the department I'm from, I recited things that were going on within their department. Hey, you guys just did a toy drive. I thought I think it went really well. Hey, you guys just had a nasty storm come through and you opened up your station as a as a shelter for people that didn't have electricity. I think that's phenomenal. You guys just had a pancake breakfast. And it was cool because the the look on their face, you know, <laughs> I mean they're like, whoa, you know. But like I said, I mean, you gave me a chance. That's the least I could do is look back at you and 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 give you that chance, give you that respect to learn something about you and there's something about your department. So that was well well received and, and a couple of the guys were shocked they're like man I, that kind of blew me away i've never had anybody do that before um so you know we we got through that at that point and um just opened up the floodgates you know this is what who we are I mean, we went very raw um as instructors you know we wanted to be very transparent um with the highs and lows of our of, of our of our own career and we were very 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 open um uh, from we hit a little bit on childhood and through, you know, school, both of us were in the military for, you know, for a period of time. And then our fire service highs and lows, you know, we've both been in trouble at points. Sometimes we have, we've done things um, wrong. We've done things right. And Hey, look, we're still here. You know, we've, we've learned from them. We haven't made the same mistakes twice or, or, or we've learned enough to better ourselves. Um, and with my, transformation i've really been working hard at that so when we opened this up and we asked them you know what what their three core values you know what what they thought they were we heard some amazing answers i mean we, we really did and it was what was so neat is they were all different but they were all so much similar we could tie them all back to the fire service we could tie them back to an aspect within a fire department we could tie them back to an aspect within a fire crew and a company i mean you could really understand how these guys you know ran their firehouses or, or worked in the, with the crews in their firehouses and it was just open open comment you know we we had uh i think we only had like 40 slides you know for a four-hour class and uh, 
we threw it out there. We were, you know, we were, re we were really open with things that we had, had seen, you know, to, uh, throughout our career, not one single department, but just things that we had participated in both in, in our career and both in training aspects. Um, and we, you know, we asked them, you know, how, based on this being your uh, core value, how do you allow this kind of stuff to happen within your department? You know, and, and we didn't we didn't bombard them with all negative. We bombarded them with a lot of good stuff, too. You know, this is great. Your core value of loyalty. Look what your department did. Your loyalty to your not. You know, everybody thinks of loyalty to each other, but you were loyal to the people you served. You took your station yeah. and you opened it up and you made sure people had what they needed. You know, so there's there's loyalty in that, you know, and, and it was really neat because we really had phenomenal conversations going and it it was kind of cool because we didn't really have to lecture you know it was a lot of open discussion you know and and the class was a challenge it was fun um, i would love to keep working on it because i think um within that aspect i think there's so many people that can get something out of it because like i said there's 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 no right there's no wrong um Everybody had validity. I think everybody took something away from it. I, I know there was things I took away from it, uh, from listening to some of the conversations. You know, I think, Chris, too, that the, like, as you're describing this, that the word that comes to my mind is humility, because you want people to talk about stuff like that. You know, sharing values is one thing, because I don't anybody can give you a canned answer. But then at the, when you're when you're following that up with, you know, kind of uh, like a rubber meets the road thing, and you're sharing your own experience that's you're being humble you, you have that humility to express hey this is what i what if this is where they've worked out for me and this is this is where i'm i might have let them down you know right and i think as a i know sitting in the classroom seeing humility is always one of those things that you know and it's usually followed up a, a sense of gratitude as well that you're and, that, and that even when we talked to, at the start of this your gratitude towards the career that you had, the people who put the energy and effort in. So doing a class like this has got to be like, it's got to be an experience and a half because you're shepherding literally, you know, I think of uh pulp fiction, right? In the end of the movie, it's right. like, I'm trying to be the shepherd. And go, <laughs> but like you're, you're being the shepherd of, of right. this conversation. And it like, in order for that to work, you have to be a hundred percent who you are. You have to be authentic and you have to have the humility to get up in front of a group of people and be like, hey, these are some of the mistakes that I've made. Yep. This is, or or this is what, when this has worked and this is when it hasn't. And that's, that's, I mean, I like, what are some of the, like, is there like a, just you know, like, there's gotta be a couple of them, but like things where you were like, we didn't expect a left turn right here. And it was a great, it was a great turn. Like, yeah, I mean, we, we actually had people start opening up the door about some of the things that they had done. You know, we would talk about the humility aspect, you know, hey, we're just throwing this stuff out here. We're bringing up topics. We're talking. And we started to see, and and, and the room was full of, of different uh, service ranges. I mean, we had mm -hmm. one guy at six uh, six months on the job. I think the oldest chief on the job at about 40-some years in the fire service. Um, so to start to tie bridges together, I mean, there were a few things that I just, it was amazing because, you know, here, here is somebody, and, you know, we have this big divide and, and, and I'm sure you've heard of it and, you know, between career and volunteer. And, and to me, there's no difference, but I think when, you know, this younger guy of, of six months on, on the department and the volunteer aspect had a open conversation with a chief of 40 years, that was amazing to sit back and watch that interaction. I mean, it was amazing. I sat back as an instructor and I'm like, didn't expect this because they carried on for almost 10 minutes together. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. I mean, I, I just stood there and I didn't say a word. I just listened and watched and was like, Oh, this is awesome. You know, this is, I, I'm so fortunate to be a part of somebody with so much experience, you know, uh, of a, of a chief of a department of 40 years. And here's a, here he's talking to a six month kid and they're not even from the same, from the same district. They're not even from the same area. They didn't even know each other. And to carry on a 10 minute conversation between each other and no animosity, no rights, no wrongs, no, you have to do it this way because this is the way we do it. You know, they, they respected each other. Um, 
to a point where one would talk, one would listen, one would talk, the other would listen. I mean, it was it was beautiful. I mean, it was kind of poetic, as, as crazy as that sounds. Didn't expect that. Um, wow. I mean, it was that was deep. It was it was a, a, yeah. a heck of an experience. Yeah. I like I said, it's, it's it has to be. So that, that was a, a class for you did this for about four hours of, of working these. The the sessions. Yeah, we had we had three sessions scheduled at four hours a piece. Did you get through the 40 slides? Uh, yes and no. Um, <laughs> I was joking, but yeah. You know, because the, the slides were, I mean, and then this isn't, we're not knocking anybody. You know, mm -hmm. I, I learned a long time ago, and, and, and people call me a squirrel or, or fire geek or whatever, but early in my career, Tommy Brennan had a, had a, had a statement, and he says, you know, you can tell um, if a company is truly in trouble by the condition of the forcible entry tools. And I've always, I've always held that one because at first, you know, younger on, I, I couldn't understand what does he mean by this? You know, why this? And as things progressed and um, as I started to, to learn more and, and start to see the pride, it made a lot of sense to me. Um, you know, and that's something I've always carried with me. It's what's, I don't know, I mean, I can't even remember how long ago he said that, but I still, I still recite that to people. Um, you know, we, we hear about being being ready, you know, and, 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 and there's so many different things we see of, of getting dressed and there's so many tricks of the trade. And I don't think any of it's wrong. I, I really don't. I'm glad to see that people are efficient. I mean, that, that's all, that's all I think we need to build is, is efficiency within, in the, in the aspects of doing it. You know, there's millions of ways to skin a cat. I mean, look at the, the nozzle controversies that are going on right now. Look at the hose manufacturers, the, I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's got a place. Everything's got a place, and 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 I'm, I'll be honest. I'm not one of these guys that can drop my helmet to my elbow to get masked up. I'm quicker to put my helmet in front of my leg and, and get masked up. That's that's just me. Hey, the guys that can can do the arm and the mask and not get because I get tangled up in it. I've had a few times I'm smacking myself in the face and. And I just wasn't proficient with it, but I went back to my standard, you know, and, and we did dress drills not too long ago. And, uh, we did basically a drop down, a drop down drill of, uh, with gloves on masking up, um, basically from getting to the front porch, masking up. I, my average time was anywhere from, you know, 19 to 20 seconds. And I know some people are going to say, oh my gosh, that's not fast enough. That's not fast enough. Well, I'm proficient with it. I was yeah. beating some of the younger guys in my department. I'm not knocking them. I mean, everybody does things differently. And I think that the, the dynamic of, of looking at that is what we really need to open our eyes up to. You know, it doesn't mean it's right. doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, it's just different. And there's a lot of ways that we do things. And, and the ultimate goal is it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the person that is relying on our skill set and, and relying on um, us to give them the best chances possible. Yeah. And I, you know, to circle back to what you started out the conversation with about looking at departments that are blue collar, I think that's one of the important things about like taking that step is because like you, like I've always been honored, even before I heard Mo Davis kind of really articulate what had been bouncing around in my brain for so many years. Right. Like we are the last line of defense for these, for, for these people in these communities. Like, mm -hmm. So we have to, like, we have to be there for them because we're the only reliable form of government that's that's going to come and, and help them out right. unconditionally. So it's you know, and 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 I see it, it a lot is you know people call us they want us to help you know we don't show up and they're already uh, they're already mad that we're there you know I mean uh, the police officers yeah. I give them so much credit because I couldn't do that job and you know this is the other thing that that I think comes with all of this is is the. Uh, the fact of, you know, you need to be confident, but not delusional, <laughs> you know, in, in, in your skill set. I mean, you, you need to be, you need to, to understand that there are importances to these things. And, you know, we all talk about each other. Hey, stay low. Hey, be safe. You know, how about being efficient? Right. You know, how about, how about repetition? Um, I, I think that's, something that I don't think we do enough of. I don't, I don't think we throw enough ladders. I don't think we stretch enough line. I don't think we need I don't think we, we max uh, pumping apparatus the way we should. And I mean, there's a, I think there's a lot of things and I don't mean just my department, sorry. I'm talking in, just in general, 
I think there's a lot of things that we'll watch a video or we'll read an article and we'll think, okay, that's gospel. We don't go out and we don't challenge it. You know, we don't, and I'm not saying you're challenging it to prove them wrong, but challenging to see if it's something that can work efficiently for yourself or your department. Yeah. Um, we change. I mean, look at, look at our gear. Look at, you know, I mean, look how everything has changed. And how many years do you have on now? I just completed my 20th year in the career fire okay. service. And I have, I think, 26 all oh, until the volunteering sure. before getting hired. You know, think back. I mean, how much things have changed. You know, the the the, the high pressure fire trucks to the dual stage pumps. Now we're going high volume, low pressures, and now we're going smooth bore versus the square uh, or the or the fan stream. I mean, I'm not saying one's better than the other. I think it really goes with application, just like everything else. But we have changed so dramatically. But I think where we've kind of failed is some of our mindsets. Well, we've always done it this way. We've always done it this way. And, and I laugh because I, I have, I've used this in some of the, in some of the pumping classes I've done. I'm like, you know, taking this line here is like taking a 22, you know, moose hunting. Yeah. You could shoot it a whole bunch of times and eventually you'll knock it down, but why not take a, you know, 300 wind mag and one shot, knock it down, you know, and we still, you know, are stuck in our ways. You know, we, we complain about, we want things to change, but then when things change, we complain about it even more. Um, but I think with the aspect of leadership, you, you've got to be flexible, um, especially with with people with experience. You know, I, I know I've seen it in multiple locations where uh, a department hires a, a person from a, another department or a volunteer aspect, and they take away their validity. They, they, they clip their wings. Yes, you're right. They need to learn the way we do things as a department. You're completely right. But don't belittle them because they have, you know, five or six years in the volunteer fire service. I mean, look at some of these volunteer fire companies throughout the United States. I mean, they're going more fires than some of our career departments are. Mm -hmm. You know, they're 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 catching the, the, the tech rescues. They're catching the pin ins. I mean, don't take away from these people. Don't don't clip the wings. I think we really need to look at, you know, you're the future, you know. Teach me where to meet you halfway. Teach me how we can how we can jive, you know, because real is going to meet real. Yeah, I, there's, and there's no doubt. I, I think one of the things too, I I you want know, tell officers like, look at your new members, whoever they come in, and really interview them. Like we already hired them, but like interview them for their because I I had a and interview them on their experiences and let them know like give them permission to use those experiences on the job because the academy or you know somebody who's just being an asshole may tell them that that experience doesn't count and i remember um we had an incident at the college with sulfuric acid and i i'm not gonna lie i like i didn't lose my cool but i was like holy shit this this sounds sulfuric acid doesn't sound like anything i want to be around right uh and like i like i know fuck all about sulfuric acid other than that, it's very bad for me um <laughs> it's not something i should use as, as a moisturizer right. and uh so we're gonna go up we're, we're 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 going up to figure this out and you know we're we're slowing down and taking our time because there's nobody in danger and everything else um and at the end of the call one of the guys said you know i didn't want to say something but and i was like and i just i, I remembered i was like well jason's a hazmat nerd like he he does this mop and glow shit he was he was on the hazmat team, and I was like, "Yo, you can stop! Like, you can grab me by the throat and stop me, kind of stop right. me, like get my attention because these are your skills. Like, I don't yeah. like and and help build me up and everything else. And now he's he's my go to guy for everything. But sure. like, I he was like, "Well, I didn't want to step on it." I was like, "No, no, no. There's no, there is no stepping on a toe here. Like, <laughs> stop right. the foot. Like, yep. whatever you gotta do." And and I, and I think that that's going to build more crew continuity than anything, and and that's just in my 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 world. That's the way I think about it. Yeah. Is you know if you if you give them some ownership within your station or within your company, um, great. I mean, granted, as a company officer, you know you're still responsible for the end decision making process, but take the advice. I don't yeah. know everything there is. I, I, there, I know I still have stuff to learn. That's why I still read books. That's why I still go to some of these classes, I still make phone calls. Um, because there's a lot out there that I've never been exposed to as with this fortunate as, I, as I've been throughout my career. 
these younger people coming in, we, we've got validity to them. You know, don't don't clip the wings. Don't don't hammer them right away. You know, I mean, and, and granted, we know we get shit bags. It happens. It, but mm-hmm. it, that's, that's just part of the job. That's part of any job, really. Um, but I think the emphasis on, on, on bringing positive impacts and, and, and showing leadership, you know, and, and what I always like to do, I like to fail. It's fun to fail in front of your guys. I mean, as crazy as that sounds. You know, um, I had an opportunity uh, a couple of days ago. We went to an apartment building on an alarm, uh, no key holder and route. We go upstairs and I had just taken my vice grips out of my bunker gear and we go to do it through the lock. And I love had, um, forcible entry. It's one of the things I love teaching. And uh, I have to laugh because we had a group of guys there and I don't have my, so I'm using my channel locks instead of my vice grips and I peel the, um, Normal culture plate around uh, the deadbolt, and I'm getting on there, and I can't get these channel locks to bite this lock. So, you know, and of course they're like, "Oh, here comes the big instructor," you know, and yeah, but it, it, it was funny because I laughed, but you know, it was, it was even better as I eventually got it. You know, and I explained to them, "Hey, don't use channel locks; use vice grips. You know, they're going to work a lot better." Um, but I had a younger guy there with me, had another lieutenant there with me and a couple captains. And I mean, I got the razzing because, you know, I said, well, it shouldn't take this long. But like I said, I mean, it is just one of those, you know, Murphy's laws took my, uh, like I said, took the vice grips out to clean them at home, left them at home, but I had my channel locks and we got through it. But it, it was fun. I, I mean, I don't look at that as a failure. I don't look at that as, you know, I, I look like an idiot or anything like that. I mean, hopefully one of those guys can say, hey, man, you know, he teaches us and still made a mistake. And yeah. he kept going. Show it. It's it's all right. We all make mistakes. You know, own it, laugh about it, and move on. But uh, yeah, that was that was one that sticks in my mind. It was it was awesome, dude. You know, because of course, you know, the senior captains were like, "Oh, here comes big hat." You know, here comes big fourth entry guru. <laughs> and it took me almost like five minutes to get through this dead bull. Oh, it was it was beautiful. I just sat there and laughed. But uh, yeah, it was fun. You know, and and I and, and I remember that early on in my career, you know, when we'd go to fire schools and stuff like that, I didn't have the opportunity, um, especially with some of the uh, mentors I had. They forced me to go first. They wanted to mm. see me. They, they wanted me to understand it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail. Now, if you repetitively fail at the same thing, then we've got a problem. But it's okay to fail. And I and I've kind of taken on with that. You know, it's okay to fail in front of people. We're not perfect. You know, the, none of us are. And, and uh, I think if you show that humility and you show that, hey, it doesn't always work the way we hoped it could. I you think know, it, it opens you up for a little bit more of an acceptance from people. I, I had the opportunity. I went to, uh, in New York State, the, uh, like, you know, as you move up, you get, get the opportunity to become a uh, municipal fire officer. And um, I have struggled with forcible entry my whole career. <laughs> And one of the one of the reasons being is that like I was taught it in the academy, and then like the departments never went out and got a forcible entry door. Sure. Like quite honestly, you know, and I National Fire Radio has been a blessing and a curse because I I didn't know about the fools chapters. Mm-hmm. I didn't know about all this training that was happening, you know, up in New England and Rusty Rickers knocking it out the, you know, the what exit fools and whatever groups were in Jersey at the time, revolutionary like they're all doing stuff and i'm sitting here like trying to figure out how to force doors by watching videos or reading something and i, I went to uh this mfi class and i said listen you know we had to do forceful entry and i said guys i gotta be honest with you i don't fucking know how to do this and everybody stopped and they looked at me i was like most of the doors in fairview i, I can mule kick open uh right. and if it doesn't work i can usually get it by the third time sure um but like I, I need you guys to show me because I don't we don't have a door prop. And that was one of the first things that I did when I got promoted to captain was make sure we got a forcible entry door because I knew how much right. like I mean like for me, like it was just you know, I was so embarrassed by it. But then like these guys had to like I had the humility to say that and and these guys from White Plains and, and Rochester were like, All right, let's uh let's show you a thing or two because we know a thing or two. Sure. <laughs> you know, and and one thing I definitely want to give props to is um, in that realm of, of instructors, there's a lot of us out there doing what we do, you know, and, and there's a lot of really solid information being transmitted. And what I think is really cool is, is we take the time to help each other out. And that class I was in uh, teaching force entry, I was down there with uh, O'Byrne and um, 
we're sitting there in between classes, you know, they were doing rotations and uh, we just got done with the lunch hour and I'm farting around with the, uh, the product called the Brasky door, which is a, a really good forceful entry prop. And uh, Sam Hiddle walks by, you know, and he says something about my form. I'm oh hell, man. This is Sam Hiddle, you know, he's, he's got this, this, uh, physics degree. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to listen. And, and I had to laugh because what he showed me, I'd been forcing doors wrong. And, and, and it was because of muscle grouping. Um, you know, I was using the impact. My arms were bent and, and he could have just walked past me and, right. and not said a word, but you know, he stopped and, and gave me a, 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 a probably a 10 minute tutorial you know, talking about muscle groups and, hey, keep, you know, your elbows uh, straight. Cause I always bent my elbows when I was forcing. And he was talking about loss of energy as your as your body parts are moving. And uh, it was awesome, you know. And, and that's what I think is so great about the fire service is, number one, you know, if if you are that guy, yeah, stop, stop and pass that information on. And if you're the guy receiving it, take it with open arms and, and, and run with it. Learn it, you know, and, and, and make these contacts because – like I said, he, I'd never met Sam before. I'd seen a bunch of his videos and, and, and this and, and some of the different trainings he'd been uh, associated with. But for him to take a few minutes out and, and give me some solid advice, it's funny now because I've been I've been using that. And him and I have talked a few times. We're supposed to get uh, together on a, on a, a Zoom or something like that. And, and he's going to show me some of the the stuff that he's, you know, he's put together um, in, the, in the knowledge aspect for forceful entry. Um but yeah, it was, that was an amazing thing. You know, I mean, here I am, you know, coming up on 30 years and I have a guy who decides to stop and, and just say something. And, and it was amazing because yeah. it was, it was, it was right on. I mean, what he, what he showed me in that, in that, you know, few minute tutorial and what it's done, you know, one for the forcible entry aspect, but the two, the longevity of my body, man, it was great. It was phenomenal. Yeah. I, I think of, um, Kurt Isaacson was telling us a story about, one of the classes he did in Pensacola and how, you know, it's, it's kind of like, a, I'm going to paraphrase it horribly, but for as much as he does with the conference and everything, they had Rex Morris there mm -hmm. and guys like forced one door with him and they're like, all right, we're good. And Rex is like, all right, cool. Like, thanks for stopping by or whatever. And then like reset the door himself and started forcing doors. He's always trying to get those reps, you know, and it was just like, I hope people get to take the opportunities when they're presented in front of them, because right. it's, you know, and, and, that, and that's a, ge that's a gentleman among uh, a gentleman, the Morris boys. I mean, yeah. uh, I, w I was on a training ground with them at FDIC a handful of years back and, and they were giving up their lunch hour to go through stuff with guys, you know, and that's, that's what it's about, you know? Um, and that's what I try to explain to new people. You know, these guys who are out there doing these classes, approach them, get to know them, have conversations with them because in the essence of things, they're no different than who we are. You know, we, we still put our pants on one leg at a time. Yeah. Um, but approach them. Don't be afraid of them. Well, and, and Chris, I think it's also, uh, you know, goes back to like take advantage of the micro conference where you don't have to worry. Not that you would have to worry about a, a bigger conference, but the, like there you have that one on one time frame to yes. sit with the instructors, have a drink with them afterwards, you know. Yep. And yeah, it's just, it's so, it's so important. Yeah. Take, take those opportunities because you know what, we're all eventually going to, going to be retiring out of the game at one point in time and, and we're going to need somebody to carry it on. And, and you never know, it could be that, you know, you as an individual, you could be the next person, you know, teaching force entry, the next person with the new nozzle or a new hose out there. You could be leading the next, you know, high class at FDIC. So Take all the opportunities you can get and, and, and make the most impact. So, Chris, you're you said earlier, you know, you're on the back nine. What's your mindset going forward now as far as like approaching that? Because I'll tell you, I hit my 20, I think it was last Friday. Um, already a couple of my classmates have uh, done their final walkouts out of the firehouse because mm -hmm. they were like, hey, when I hit my 20, I'm, I'm you know, if I'm still of sound body and mind i'm i'm stepping out and uh sure. you know it's it's i know it's it's definitely in my head a little bit you know but like for for you like what are you what are you thinking you know about how this next this this last nine holes is going to go 
you know, I, I've had I've had a mindset change, um, and I don't mean this in an arrogance way, but what am I trying to prove, and who am I trying to prove it to? Um, you know, our gear's not getting lighter. <laughs> you know, the fire dynamics have changed. I mean, I remember first, you know, coming in and fire fire doubles every thirty seconds. You know, that was that was beat into our head, and now, I mean, look, look I mean, we're crawling into, for lack of better words, a. Yeah, plastic world you know we're we're in hydrocarbon heaven when we're calling into so many of these houses the dynamics have changed um at 26 years old wearing 85 pounds of gear was fantastic you know i loved it being at 50 now it's a big difference um i don't really focus on my last day in the firehouse because that's going to be tough um but i think what my views are now is is what can I do to take the next generation and motivate them? I don't have all the answers. I, I wish I did. I wish I could give them every, every piece of sound advice they can. Um, I fall back to my mentors. Those, those, like we talked about early on, um, those days of shutting down the nozzle on a vacant house fire. Those mean not, those, those have a different purpose to me now. Um, and I, and I'm trying to share that information with these younger guys because it's their department. I'm a short timer in the, in the, in the overall realm of things. I mean, I really am. Um, if, if I didn't pass this information on, if I didn't try to make a positive impact, I am taking the validity out of anybody who put time into me. I'm, I'm, I'm kicking dirt in their face or I'm tarnishing their reputation. Um, I still have a lot of loyalty to those guys. Um, I got a couple buddies who give me a hard time and, and they'll, they'll call up to Gary and talk to Grady and he knows they has, uh, they got a lot of loyalty to him. Um, he makes a phone call. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, he yeah. helped raise me, you know, but, but that's that, that's that accountability and that's that love. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate there, but yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of my plan for my back nine. Um, give as much as I can. Because the only thing I really want, I want to be able to come back in a firehouse and just have a cup of coffee and be welcomed. I don't want a red carpet treatment. I don't want a band playing. I don't want any of that. I just, when I retire, I want to be able to stop by and, and, and somebody say, hey, you want to come in and have breakfast with us? You want to have a cup of coffee? And, and, and be able to sit down at a table with guys for half hour, hour, four hours, depending on, on the situation. That's That's my goal. I want to leave it better than I found it. I want to make sure that I respect and give... Um, the mentors who took time with me, every bit of respect because they earned it. Well, I mean, I, I definitely think you're going to be successful in that because I just know you as an individual. So I'm a little bit, uh, maybe I'm a little bit of an easy sell here, but you know, <laughs> talk to my wife. She'll be brutally honest with you. Right, right, right. <laughs> Actually, uh, but don't talk to my kids because they'll be really brutally honest with you. <laughs> jokes on you after this for doing a family. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hang on, because you're going to need more than an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris, as we're wrapping up here, um, where where can people find you, and what's what's on the horizon for you? I know we have FDIC around the corner. We're in we're in training yeah, season. Um, as I like to call this it. year at FDIC, I'm 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 doing the announcing. This is my third year of working outside in between um, the convention center and uh, Lucas Oil. Um, it's the outdoor uh, Scott Rosenbauer Lion, and I do the I do like the MCN for it. So I'm got the microphone in my hand, and I'm trying to get people in, and, and it's all a lot of the the, the training simulators. Um, we go out there and talk about products. They run some scenarios. It's a uh, it's it's interesting. You know, there's the the technology is changing. The days of being able to take a vacant house and, and light it on fire and, and not have any issues with EPA or neighbors or, or whatever the case is. And the training props, you know, it's something that uh, I got involved with about three years ago. I was asked to to kind of be the MC with it, and and it's continually growing. We're trying to do different things within it, and and uh, we've talked to some of the manufacturers, and this year we're going to try some different things, and 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 hopefully it takes off. Um, Anybody can contact me. I'm on social media. Um, my uh, email is uh, deacon1661 at gmail.com. Um, I would give out my phone number, but I've learned years ago that, you know, some of my buddies drunk dial me at 3 a.m. and my wife yeah. does not find that funny. Yeah, um, that's a solid move right there. 
<laughs> right. You know, it's not it's not that you won't eventually have my number, but I'm real selective of who I give it to now. Um, yeah, if, if, you know, I'm here for anybody. I, like I said, there's some things I can help with. There's some things I may not have the answer, but you know what? The network I've been able to form, I guarantee I can find it for you. Chris, uh, just real quickly, on so you've been doing the outside stuff between the convention center and Lucas Oil, mm-hmm. um, and I'm always going out uh, and I'm running into you. What? So for those who are attending FDIC, if this is your first year, like I, I, I don't want to say like, hey, how do you just come out there and 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 take it? But like, because I feel like people are a little shy sometimes when it comes to the demonstrations and putting their hands on stuff. And that's exactly what that whole area is set up for yes. to an extent. So yep. any, like any, yep. any, can you touch on that just a little bit? Because I, I, I that's, how I always tell people go and put yourself out there, grab, grab the, you know, the, the thing that looks weird to you and try it, you know, sure. I don't, you don't have to do Euro helmets. I won't support that one at all. <laughs> um, but you know, go out and, well, one of the things that with that with that setup there is is you know with the sponsors who are running the scenarios, you know once the scenario is done because we have you know the the uh, fire simulators, one's a car, I think they have a helicopter there occasionally. Um, we have a bunch of different things that we do. You know, you get to come in and, and you can talk to any of the um, I don't want to call them performers, any of the guys doing the demonstration. You're talking about the bunker gear they're wearing. The manufacturers have representatives there to talk to you about these training props, to show you some of the new technology that's out there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not a gadget and gadget man, but in some of the things that I've gotten to see product line wise, some of it is actually really impressive for the training ground. Um, some of it you can set up, some of it you can take with you um, and, and use in different buildings. They have these digital flame panels, and uh, you can control them. They can actually take direct hits of uh, host streams, and if you actually put a couple of these screens together, if the host stream doesn't move the pattern correctly with what, what, what you're teaching, the flames necessarily don't go out. Um, you can add smoke machines to it. It's it's kind of a just – it's it's an extension for the training. Um, yeah. But yeah, anybody that comes out there, I mean, we have bleachers. You can watch the the demonstration, and like I said, the manufacturers have have their guys out there. And I'm just there to MC it. I'm just there to get people involved and ask questions, and just kind of a hype man, I guess, is the best way to put it for for the demonstration. And uh, those guys are really dialing in. I know. Um, was it last year? A year before, we had the electric fire truck from Rosenbauer. You know, so that brought a lot of people in because people wanted to see yeah. what it was about. Um, so yeah, there's there's some neat technology out there, and uh, any of the stuff that that's at FDIC, especially for anybody that's new coming to it, um, go up, shake a hand, and introduce yourself to somebody. It doesn't matter who it is. I I have yet to meet any of our instructors um, that won't take time to talk to you. Uh, I mean that, that goes for anybody. The manufacturers, that's what they're there for. They're there to answer questions. They're there to make friends and. I love the fact of being able to go in and out. And sometimes, you know what? I don't remember people's names at times, but I remember faces. And I think it's amazing where you may not see somebody for an entire year and you get to FDIC and you're walking down a corridor and you nod ahead. Hey, man, you stop, you shake a hand. How you been? And you know what? Be honest, you, you probably don't even remember each other's names. But you remember a conversation you had one at one point in time. Yeah. You know, where you can, hey, man, how'd this work out for you? Oh, it was great. And and you move on. So you know, for so for anybody that's new or anybody that's wanting to come out there, man, just put yourself out there. There's nobody, and and if anybody is an asshole, then they're an asshole. I mean, there's there's right. no reason for a situation like that to be there. You catch them in the bar, buy them a beer, have a talk with them. These guys are fantastic. There's amazing instructors. There's amazing amazing people who've got good information that's willing to talk to you. Um, they're not so. I mean, I don't want to say they're not celebrities. They're celebrities in the realm of um, their names out there, their faces out there. Yeah. But they're humble. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about Bob Morris earlier. That is one of the most humble individuals I think I've ever met. Um, you talked about Kurt Isaacson and, and, and these guys. Hey, they, they were at one time the new guy too. Yeah. Now they have just got it to the point where they've learned, they've put it out there. And that's all. That's all it is. Is a, is, a, is a leap of faith. It's either going to take off or it's going to fail miserably. It's only two options you got in life. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, thank you. Thank you for spending an hour with me tonight and 
and having this conversation on Frontline Mindset. I appreciate it uh, more than but more than I can ever express to you. But I will buy you a drink out at uh, FDIC. Uh, <laughs> as a, uh, I always look forward to seeing you guys, man. Yeah. We always have a good time. I know you guys have got a full plate down there, and yeah. uh, we'll be. Uh, yeah, we'll... We have a booth in the hallway this year with that in Firefighter nice. Row there. So I think we'll be set up to uh, doing some interviews. We'll be doing sure. some. Uh, stuff with different manufacturers and whatnot. So we're pretty excited about it. So Good. we Good. hope to see everybody out there and uh, yeah, thank you for, uh, thank you for coming out. I'll do our hey. uh, outro here and uh, we'll uh, just hang on for a minute afterwards here. Right. So everybody thank you just... so very much for the opportunity, Rob. I appreciate it. Oh no, thank you. To, trust me. I, I, I appreciate, I always I, I said, I, I never will forget the, uh, the kindness, the kindness that you and, and Captain Yellish had for me when I was had you know was able to stop by in Terre Haute. Right. It was uh, you talk about brotherhood and people say that brotherhood's dying or this and that, and I don't believe it because I've experienced it before. And if you think that it's dying uh, and you have negative things to say about it, take a good hard look in the mirror because you may be you may be the common denominator in that mathematical right. equation. Right. So, and sometimes that, a look in the mirror is the hardest look to me. <laughs> yeah. So with that being said. Uh, this is Rob, Frontline Mindset with National Fire Radio, Lieutenant Chris Overpeck, Terre Haute Fire Department. Thank you for coming on. We'll see you guys out there. Come check us out at FDIC. We'll be in the hallway in Firefighter Row. And come see Chris outside for the demonstrations. He's going to be narrating this. It's going to be a good time. We will see you guys out there. Everybody stay safe until we catch you on the next one. Thank you. Have a good day. National Fire Radio.